Okay, all right. So it is recording. So thank you everybody. Today is our first official lecture type of day, whereas before we just had kind of a general question and answer. Um, but I do know that there's probably some people that have questions and so I am gonna open the floor for just a little bit um, to ask some questions. So hang tight for just a second on that note. But again, um, the purpose of this, and I just kind of want to explain it, is that every Wednesday, we're going to be meeting live like this. I will be recording it if you're not able to attend. Um, my hope is that if you cannot attend, because I am going to try to cover a synopsis of each chapter during this particular lecture um, in a way in which either it's flipped the classroom or a just a lecture format. Um, it's gonna go back and forth on that um, to make sure that you understand the concepts that were addressed in the chapter. And then after the Wednesday, that is when then we want to have you take the exam or shortly after that. Um, so in this case, I think majority of them are occurring, uh, let me double check, but they should be occurring on Sundays. So we'll have lecture on Wednesday and then you'll have up until that Sunday to get all of the information um, processed through and, and closed. And so what I mean by that is that the idea here is that when you have a due date, the entire chapter will always be due on a Sunday, the Wednesday after we covered it, okay? So that hopefully sheds a little bit more light on kind of how the schedule is supposed to be. I know that there's some confusion on that, so that hold that thought for a minute. Um, and that's kind of what I wanna do next is just briefly talk a little bit about um, the questions that you might have. So I just wanna redirect everybody's attention. Um, one of the things that I've tried to do in the last week is I'm trying to get my classes up and, and, and going and, and loaded with all the content, but I've been a little slow at that because I'm also trying to stay on top of my emails because I know that students get frustrated and they need help from their instructors right away. And so I'm trying to be very present in our class. But with that, if I'm replying to everybody's emails, in this particular course, there's about 70 of you. I have more courses than just yours. I have four other courses, so three other courses in yours. So um, to answer everybody's email, it spends a, a lot of my day, and a lot of the times it's the same question over and over again. And although that's good, I can copy and paste, it's still taking time. And so I wanna direct your attention to um, this question cafe area where a lot of you could ask a lot of these questions that you're sending me. And I just wanna redirect you to just remember, I know that it's hard, everybody, instructors do it differently, and your gut is to be like, oh, let me just email the instructor. But for our class, if we can get in the habit of using this 24-hour um, question and answer live peer um, information, then it will be better. You can once you can subscribe to this so that you actually get email or you know notifications when people are asking questions. And so I encourage you to do this. And so I just want to give shout out to Tara and Amanda. Um, because the and Penny because they were the ones that started asking questions and that's exactly what I want you to do And if some of the other students that sent me the same questions would have looked here They would have already had the answer prior to me actually sending it to them, but um, I want to just kind of give you heads up on that so uh, the, the one that I really want to bring your attention to and I know that some of you are very I'm still getting emails about that is that the mind tap dates might not have showed properly um, as far as when I wanted it due. And what I'm telling you, and hopefully what you just got out of my last, com the beginning conversation here, is that for chapter, this first chapter, chapter one, you'll be tested on Sunday, or you need to be finished by everything on Sunday, okay? And that means that the mind tap um, needs to be completed as well by Sunday. And some of that was showing today, and that's just my mistake. Um, I don't know what got into me. I, I, well, today's my birthday, so I don't know if I subconsciously said, oh, it should be due on my birthday. No, I'm kidding. But I, I don't know why I picked, I don't know what happened. But it, everything is not going to be due until Sunday. Okay, so I want to rest assured for people that you know that you have nothing due today per se, and that I think that I fixed it. But if I didn't, because on my end, it's still showing now on this, uh, then I want to hear from you. And so that's where then you could say it here so that Others can say, yes, I see it too, or no, I see it the right way. And if we have the dialogue in here, then I'm not emailing back and forth different students and trying to keep up on it. So um, 
anyways on that. And then I do want to answer Lillian's question because um, this is one I think that is on a lot of people's minds right now too. And I want to make sure that they understand that. And that's when after this, I'll open up to any kind of questions that you want to ask before we actually get into our live lecture series. So um, Lillian was asking, if you purchase Cengage Unlimited, do you have access to MindTap? And the answer is yes. So I just want to make sure that everybody understands the two ways that are probably the best ways to get the book is to either use the immediate access program that just onboards you and then the university bills you. So the university's acting as your credit card. They're fronting the payment to the publisher and then the university's gonna go back and bill you in about 10 days or so. And then you pay when you can and they're gonna wanna be like badgers and keep badgering you to pay. But what I'm telling you is even if your student loan check hasn't come in or you need to wait till payday that's at the end of the month, they're not gonna drop you from my course. They, if you don't pay it over a certain period of time, you're not gonna be able to register for the spring, but that's it. So that is one of the ways in which you can get the book. Now, if you're not going to be utilizing the IA program because the cost um, might be more effective if you have other instructors that are using a Cengage book, and it does not have to be a nutrition course. It could be a chemistry, it could be a math, it could be any other course that you're taking. Usually if you have two or more classes in which you have a Cengage book, then you use Cengage Unlimited. The difference with Cengage Unlimited is like you're buying a subscription for that particular semester. So you can buy the subscription and in that subscription, whatever the, because the book that we buy, or the book that we use will come with MindTap, so will it with Cengage Unlimited. The only thing that is going to be different that I wanna point out is when you use Cengage Unlimited, if you buy the subscription, that is only a six month subscription, and you are planning to be in this course for Nutrition 165 in the spring, if you're a nutrition major, um, sometimes physical therapy and nursing don't have to take the second, um, second set. So if you're a nutrition major, you're going to need Nutrition 160 and you're gonna need 165. And since we use the same book, then what's gonna happen if you use Cengage Unlimited for six months? At the end of six months, Cengage Unlimited is going to make you, if you asked and got a copy of the hard copy textbook. So when you enroll in Cengage Unlimited, the beauty of it is, is that you're going to get an e-text and you have the option of getting the actual book for any class that you're enrolled in. But it, and it still will come with MindTap to answer that question um, for Lillian. But at the end of six months, you have to send this book back. So now you no longer have a book. But you already have access to MindTap. And that MindTap access, the way that our MindTap is set up is it's going to give you access for the entire academic year. So you will still have access to MindTap for Nutrition 165. But now when you go into MindTap, that's where the e-text is. And so you'll have just the e-text if you only buy the six month subscription on Cengage Unlimited. So my other question to you as a student would be, do you know what other courses in the springtime that you're gonna take? If you're gonna take another course in which you have two or more professors that are using the Cengage book, then you might wanna buy the year subscription and then you can keep the textbook pretty much for both the time. You send it back and then they have to send it back to you again for the next semester. But that's how you can keep it or think about it. Now, Dr. Puya uses it in a lot of her classes. Dr. Herzig uses it in her classes um, that are nutrition. But even find out if you know you have to take a, another science class or chemistry class or something like that. If you can find out what that book is um, going to be for next semester, then that might help you determine maybe Cengage Unlimited with the year subscription is actually the cheapest way to go. So I hope that I answered Lillian's question and that she feels more comfortable knowing that Cengage Unlimited does come with MindTap and you will have access, if you onboard with MindTap this semester, you will be able to have the access even in the academic year for next year. The only thing that's going to be different is that you will not have access to having a book because you're gonna to have to send the real book back, but you'll still have the e-text and the MindTap. Is there anybody else that wants to ask a question about either Cengage Unlimited or the IA or any questions about the book? Please feel free right now to unmute yourself and ask a question. I have a question about the book. So MindTap, um, can you buy that separately if you have the book or if, so I'm kind of confused on 
So, because on Canvas it says you can opt out on the on um, buying the book automatically. So, um, I'm kind of confused on which which way you you recommend us buying the book. Because yeah. I want like a hard copy and like the PDF, and then MindTap. MindTap is connected to the subscription. If I were to buy it by itself, like I'm not sure how this works. Yeah. So let me try to explain this a little bit more. That's a great question. And I can see why that's confusing. So um, what I want to say is that you can buy standalone versions of MindTap out on the internet, Amazon, um, you know, Barnes and Noble, all the other places that are going to sell books are probably going to sell standalone um, MindTaps. There's a couple things that students need to be aware of if they're going to buy a standalone mind tap is that usually that standalone mind tap is going to cost more than the bundle that we have with the IA program, which is like the $63 or whatever it is. It, if it's 70, I'm not sure. So it, whatever that price is that it, I'm just going to keep saying 63, but no, if I'm wrong, you know what the real price is. So that 63 price is usually going to be cheaper than buying a standalone version of the mind tap that is the right one because there's different ones you have to have a mind tap that is integrated into a learning management system so if you buy the wrong one that's a standalone mind tap that doesn't integrate with our learning management system you've just bought access to something that you can't use so you want to make sure that you buy the right one and so sometimes students will send me pictures of this is what I was thinking of buying and I'll look at it and I'll tell them, nope, that is not the right one. It is not going to work. They're going to give you an access code. They're going to give you an access code to an outside mind tap that your instructor had created. I'm not, I don't do that. Mine is integrated into our learning management system. So you have to buy the right one. So there is an option to buy it standalone. What I'm telling you is that I have yet to see a cheaper price to buy a standalone mind tap than the bundle that the bookstore has with the publisher. And they specifically do that because the publisher wants to buy, wants you to buy direct from our bookstore and direct from them. And so even their direct price is usually more money. So, and their mind tap will usually come with the e-text as well. And, and, and we can purchase it, um, the immediate asset access, is that how we purchase it? Or do we have to purchase it in the bookstore and we'll get the mind tap and then the, like say if we want the full year subscription because I'm gonna be taking the second part next semester. Okay, that's a good question. So if you, uh, if you do nothing, okay, and you've onboarded and you have access right now to mind tap and the e-text, you will be billed by the bookstore. You don't have to do anything else. So that's the beauty of the IA is that inside of your My Fresno State portal in about 10 days from now, they'll run a list of everybody who onboarded and has access to that textbook. And okay. They'll fill you and you would do absolutely nothing. Now, okay. and that's the easiest way, really, and it, almost the cheapest. However, okay. sometimes if someone has an older copy of the book or they have someone where they can find this textbook or where they can rent this textbook, that's fine, but keep in mind that you still, if you're just renting the textbook, that you're not getting access to the mind tap. Mm -hmm. And the mind tap has homework. And if you want to get homework points, you have to buy, you have to get some kind of access into that. And the easiest way usually to do that and the cheapest is the IA. So if we opt out on the media access, we can re- uh, we can redo it, right, to where we can have the immediate access before September. Yes, yeah, so sometimes you have to call the bookstore on that, and they have to re like delete you and then let you add again. So okay. I would encourage you if that happened, where if you opted out, then um, they aren't going to bill you, and you will lose access after the ten days. Okay, they're going to shut their little portal off that they have with the publisher company at that particular point. Um, now. Again, if it's cheaper for some to go with Cengage Unlimited, what I want you to know is all those students, if they're gonna go with Cengage Unlimited, you need to opt out of the IA program or you will be billed in 10 days. So you don't want to do that. So where you opt out is I had to build inside. So hopefully everybody can see this. This IA bookshelf area here, this is where you go to opt out. 
So I've been instructed by the bookstore to make sure that students that know that they're going to do Cengage Unlimited, that they need to opt out in this particular area right here. So the Cengage Unlimited is the link that you provided for us? So it's gonna, it's, it will take you the same way, but then you kind of onboard a little differently. I mean, you onboard the same, but you have to let them know you want to do Cengage Unlimited at some point rather than the IA. And so if you're having questions about that, what I would say the best thing to do is that's where I posted in the announcements where the publisher is going to be available, her and all of her computer tech people um, will be available during office hours every day. Uh, oops, did I hit the wrong one? No, right here. Um, you can go in every day from 12 to 2, from now until September 3rd. Anytime, pop in, and they will make sure that you know, if you want to do Cengage Unlimited, they'll make sure that you get it the right way. Last year, I can tell you this, I do know that sometimes it would say like you hadn't, you'd already done the Cengage Unlimited, but they have some kind of promotional banner thing that never goes away. And so it was screwing people up. So that might be the same this year. So that's why I want you to go in and speak directly with Sarah, who is our book rep or whoever she has inside of that meeting. There's a computer lady named Brandy and there's a bunch of tech support people that will help you and make sure ask that question because it's a very good question to ask. You want to make sure that you're, you're getting the right bundle. Professor, then, I have a question. On top of that, the, with the immediate access, do you just honestly, do you just recommend that we just stick with the immediate access because it's easier? Well, I don't know. I mean, I think it depends. Well, I want, I want you to get the best deal for your bang for your buck. That's really what I want for you guys. Like I try really hard to not make things more expensive. And you know, sometimes teachers are just like, well, ah, we'll just do this because it's cheaper. I can tell you, I've never, I mean, we used to, this book used to be hard copy like this with that year access, $256. Now they've got it down to 63. I'm pretty sure that we have got the cheapest rate possible because she's trying to earn my business because I've, I've threatened to pull out and not have the book anymore because the book published, not her, but the book made a super big mistake a couple years ago and I think it was just blatantly bad. Um, so I have a little bit more leverage and I've leveraged that leverage to be like, okay, I'm not gonna use your book anymore. You made a huge, huge mistake in your editing and. I, I don't want to use your book. And so she's trying really hard to earn our business. And so she's given us the best price possible. So IA is usually the best price. However, again, if you do the IA and you want to have a hard copy textbook, I think that you can. Um, if you want to try to buy one from the bookstore, they will order you one. And that's where I thought the bookstore rep told me like, that it might be like $24. So you can, so it just depends on, you know, for those, I guess what I'm saying is some people want a hard copy book. So if it doesn't make a difference to you on a hard copy book or not, then yeah, the IA is probably the cheapest, but some people are taking another class or they really want to have this real hard copy. The one that you can get through the IA isn't going to be exactly like this. It's going to be more like a stack of papers that you get and they're going to have three hole punches in it and it's like a, you can put it in a binder but you can pull them out chapter by chapter and the pages are super thin so sometimes when you when you flip the page you rip the page so if people don't mind those types of things then the ia is going to be the cheapest and if, then oh go ahead oh, sorry i'm like i'm just trying to like i know other people have questions so yeah. i'm like um i just have one last one and it's kind of with the immediate access, I go to the immediate access page and I'm not being able to just click in and start my homework or anything with the mind tap. And when you say immediate access, you're not talking about here, right? You're talking about the way that I want you to go is go into the module. And then when you go into our modules and you go down to this link right here, mm -hmm. after that, it's not letting you onboard. Is that what you're saying? Yeah it's not letting me on board. So I go to the, it's the brown, which, which one do you want me clicking for the modules? It's the brown nutrition through the life cycle mind tap, right? And then the nutrition 160. Oh yeah, you can't see my screen. Right? Can you guys see my screen? Can you see this one right here? Yeah, we can see it. Yeah, yeah. Let's see it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's the one I want you to click on. 
because it's got the 100 points attached to it. So this has mm -hmm. all of the assignments already there, ready for you to click on. And when I just clicked on that one, then it brings me to like this page and this is what I get. But prior to that, you have to have the username and you have to enter all that stuff and then, um, but you should be able to see this. And then what you should see is the learning objectives and all of that stuff and, and, and the book and you can get in over here um, is actually where you can see the book as well. This is called Read Speak, which is, I'm getting off topic for a second, but I want people to know that the book, you can have Read Speak where you can have it tell you, read you the book. So you don't have to read the book. So you can just put on some headphones and, and listen to it or whatever. So all of the ebook stuff is over here. You can highlight, you can, once you highlight it, you can put that into a notes page and it can help you with a studying mode. So there's quite a few cool features of the e-text, but okay, so let me go back. So if you're not getting this right here, then I want you to go to those office hours with the publisher. Could you do because that? Because we're not supposed to pay for anything, right? Because right. I just paid for something. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah I clicked in, it had me pay and everything. So. Okay. So what will probably happen is talk to Sarah and if they, if they, they might be able to reimburse your money and get you to the right one that you want to do. If you didn't want to do, like if it charged you, did it charge you for Cengage Unlimited? Yeah. Okay. Then tell her that and then she'll probably be able to fix that for you. Okay. So, perfect. Thank you. Professor, so I have a question. Go ahead. Um, I purchased the, the Cengage Unlimited. I purchased the two year and when I and I added that this class to the dashboard and when I try to access it, it says I need a course key and it says the professor has the course key. It says they do not have the course key available and the professor should provide it to me. And I, I went to their website and I watched the video for Canvas and it had the, the links on the side, our classroom links, like our assignments, pages, files. And in their example, the professor had the court a tab for the course key and apparently that's where students are supposed to find it. So I'm not sure why it's asking for a course key. Yeah. It won't let me, it won't let me access it and it won't oh, let me access it. Uh, I can help with that. If yeah. I, I, the publisher assured me, I sent her an email, that's what I was pulling up. She said it's there. So, so you got I, just, I, can, okay. ask, I think I can answer the question. Okay, let's have the student answer. What, what's going on? Who can oh, okay. Oh, okay, so, so I had the same problem and I kind of spent some time doing that. So you have to go on Canvas. Um, and I don't remember the exact link, but you go to Nutrition Basics, I think. Um, once you click that, that will direct you um, to Cengage to log in. And then once you log in, you should have that already uh, enrolled. And it'll say like purchased enrolled or something, but you have to start on Canvas first. That's step one. And then you have to go to um, one of the links on Canvas. Like I said, I think it was Nutrition Basics and then that will direct you straight to Cengage and then you just, they just work together to link. And is Nutrition Basics, Basics you said? Yeah. yeah, I think it was that one. I didn't Where? get it. It should be one um, of those. Ones. I did it that way for Biochem. It had like a link and then it kind of syncs it to your Cengage account. And then the Nutrition, um, on Cengage Unlimited, there should just be like, um, like a search, like textbook section and I just searched it and then added it to my yeah, like, yeah. so you would have yeah. to do one for your ebook access on your home page for Singage Unlimited and then you would have a separate one which is just for MindTap but with Singage Unlimited you have access to MindTap yeah okay okay so thank you so much guys very much appreciate it sorry if I interrupted anyone no, that's okay. So I'm glad you, guys, but if you're having problems, my biggest thing on that one is there's nothing much I can help you with because I do believe it's set up right because I specifically asked the publisher. So the best thing to do though is let her do it with you. And if she can't figure out the way, then she'll tell me, she'll email me and be like, okay, I told you wrong. But she sent me an email and said it should be able to be seen in Cengage Unlimited. And it does sound like some students were able to see it. So it's just probably the way, but she told me that the way that I, I even asked the computer lady, do I not have it set up right? And she said, nope, you have it set up right. So I've gotten a couple different emails because I get nervous because I can't see that side either. Um, so you'll get access, but if you could try to go to those office hours, that's the best thing that I can suggest. Professor, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Okay, so do you think it's my only concern about not having a hard copy is I'm worried that along the way for my major, I'm going to have to like, you know, maybe I need to reference something or I'm going to have to look back. Um, so what's your thought on that? Um, I'm a, a dietitian major. 
So I'm just worried that if I, you know, what if I do need, like, I'm not going to have access to that information anymore. Yeah, I know. And that's, that's kind of what the problem is. Um, however, when you're probably really going to need the information again, it's probably, it could be like your internship time. And by then two things are going to happen. Either the book is going to have a, a revised edition and it's going to be not as valid. And then you're still going to worry, did I get the right information? Or um, you're just going to Google it. So, I, I mean, I, I, I'm not saying I believe I love Google University, but for a lot of what people are like, I remember reading that in my book and, I, and then you Google it and then you can find almost the same thing. So I don't know that I feel that you need to have it, although I'm old school and I certainly love reading out of the book and I still like to keep all my books. So I still do, but the reality of it is, is that I probably use Google University more than I go back to my textbook. Because even when I go back to my textbook, then I'm like, okay, did they change this? Here's my example. I wanna tell you something that's funny, but not really funny. I taught Nutrition 147 for many years, which is Nutrition in the Athlete. And um, then I stopped teaching it. And then one semester, a couple semesters ago, I needed to team teach it with Dr. Priya because we were both having issues with our teaching faculty loads. And so we, we separated the class up and there was a new, a new edition of the book. And I thought, oh, I you know everything in the book. And so here I am going through and I'm talking to the students and we're talking about ATP. We're talking about the Krebs cycle and I'm telling them how many ATP come out of the Krebs cycle. And all of them look like they have this dumb look on their face, like you know the deer in the headlights. And I'm like, what the heck? And then so finally one brave student says, Miss Ireland, um, that's not what the textbook says. And I'm like, what? And she, so then I had to go back and I like looked at the textbook and sure enough, the ATP amount has changed over time. Scientists have decided that now there's not 38 ATP, it's only 32. But I didn't know that. So I'm just saying like, that was my aha moment. Like, oh wow, I, yeah, like I just, you just, I don't know that. I don't know that you'll need it. I hope that helps, but. You just, Thank you. Mm -hmm. I have a quick question, professor. Yeah. Um, when I go, I have the immediate access. I didn't bother with um, Cengage because I think this is the only class this is using it. But um, when I go to the IA bookshelf, it says there's no materials associated with the course. Is that because you haven't posted anything or is that because I did something wrong? Okay, that is only because that is only there to opt out of. Like the, my book, because it's not a, just a book, some, some teachers' books will be there because they just have a book. But because I integrate it with this package with MindTap, in order for you to fully onboard, you need to go to this part here. Have you already done that part, Gina? I've gone to Cengage. Yeah, or like clicked on my link here and then, and then got in. I guess what I could do is... It opens a Cengage login. Do I have to pay to make an account or no? Mm -mm. No, you okay. should not pay. Okay, so that answers my question. Thank you. Okay, and so then once you get all of that, that is where... Um, then you'll see all of these assignments and what's due. But see, I was just gonna, I'm not supposed to like show you student records, but I thought maybe if you guys could see your names in the grade book, that would make you feel more comfortable. So like all of these people that I have here, they've onboarded already. So Gina, what's your last name? Smith, so let me Yeah, so your name's not there. So okay. you haven't fully went through. So, and I think you know that, so that's fine. But that's how I can tell if everybody's through is by looking at the grade book to see who's there. So again, if someone wants to see something or wants to make sure that they've onboarded properly, I have office hours um, today that you can book and we can go in and we can look at that stuff. So just to review even on the, um, on the where you go to book my office hours. If you just go to my instructor bio page, right here, I have a direct link. It's also in the syllabus. You guys can click on that and you can book office hours anytime from 11 to two on Wednesdays or two to four on Thursdays. And then when you're ready to join, you just go to this link right here and it'll take you to my personal meeting room. So hopefully if you need help, that that's one of the ways that you can do that too. Um, but also that Cengage lady is really good. So you can certainly take advantage of their student office hours that they're having if it's a textbook thing. Okay, did I get most questions answered? I have a question, Professor. 
Okay, good. So I am doing the R RD track, and I wanted to um, ask because there's two options for the um, Cengage Unlimited. It's one year or two years. And I wanted to ask if the other classes for the remaining of the program, because I'm going to be doing um, 165, 165, 165 S and 170 for the um, next few semesters. Do you recommend me to just get the two year plan? Mm -hmm. It is the cheapest. And I can tell you that Dr. Puya and Dr. Um, Herzig use these books. So I know for sure though, like one of the classes that Dr. Herzig uses this book is in your senior year. So I guess it just depends on, um, but she, I think she uses it. You can reach out to her and you could ask her too. If, the, if it's community nutrition, I think that she uses it as a Cengage product in that book, in that class too. Dr. Puya uses it for advanced metabolism when you guys are going to take that. Um, so I strongly think that the two year is probably going to serve you the best, but I, you know, I, I, I want you guys to, you know, feel comfortable in your purchase of whatever you think is good, but feel free to reach out to the instructors and ask them those questions. Like, do you, I'm taking your course in a little bit. I'm just trying to see if Cengage Unlimited is, is right for me. Do you know if you're going to be using this, a Cengage book in this class? And they'll answer. Yes, I know I'm going to, or yeah, no, I'm not. So if we do the Cengage um, Unlimited, do we have to opt out on the one? Yes, the other one? that's the part I want. If you do Cengage Unlimited, then that is where you have to at least go into that IA bookshelf area and opt out because in a, if you don't, they're going to charge you the bookstore. Because what happens is a Cengage sends them a list of the students that are on, that are inside of the course. And they're supposed to pull out all of their IA people first. I mean, excuse me, not IA, um, Cengage Unlimited. They'll pull out all of their subscriptions that, they, that people have paid for. And whatever those remaining students are, that's the list they give to the bookstore. And that is when the bookstore then goes in and charges. But the bookstore will look at the IA opt out. And if you opted out and your name somehow was on that list, they're not going to charge you. Because that means that Cengage made a mistake. That makes sense. Okay, so thank I you. A, I have a quick question. Question of, um, for the assignment that was due on the 24th, where it says, can the food you eat help you score better on exams? Uh -huh. I'm having a hard time finding the link to that. Okay, so let's look that. Yeah, same here. Um, I had no idea that that homework was due until um, I'm still new to like Canvas. I'm a transfer student and I kept going on modules to check if you had assignments due. Yeah. And popping up there. So I thought we didn't have homework until yesterday at night. I was like, I realized that Canvas has like this calendar for you. And I was looking through it and I was like, oh my gosh, like there was assignments on Monday. So I, you know, I, yeah, I had no idea that. It's I'm a little different. I feel like um, this Canvas section for your class, um, Dr. Ireland, because um, I did notice that like, it's kind of hard, like you have to like physically look to see what to do on the dates or else like it doesn't pop up. Like, I don't know, I think it's just a little different cause like on like biochem, I can automatically see like what to do and what, you know, with the dates. But here I have to like look in the modules and see what the dates on them or in the calendar like Lupita was saying. Yeah, I had the same issue. I, and I was like freaking out cause I, I don't ever yeah. miss comments. I'm like, oh my gosh, like I had no idea. Like nothing, it's different. I understand, I understand instructors do different things differently. So, um, yeah, it's just something that I was completely like. No, I appreciate you saying uh, that. I mean, I don't, I don't want it to be more confusing. So it's not the meet and greet that you're seeing. It's where are no. you seeing the other one? If you go to grades, it shows an assignment. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So see, the problem is, is that I haven't really assigned it to you. See how it's not here. I don't want you guys to have to do that one, first of all. That one is probably on there because... I have an intro shell that I copy and bring everything in. And so it's there for my undergraduate course. And so it shouldn't be there. It's part of a different module. Um, yeah, we'll see it if so I will look at our grades. Wait, so nutrition, the nutrition video, um, we didn't have to do that or? Uh, okay. I so it. two things. I did it. I will let, yeah, it's fine. If you did it, it's great. Um, what I'll probably do is use it for extra credit. So, you know, if you have it there, like if you're borderline on a grade and you're like, man, I really want the A, but I'm like, you know, point two, whatever off, I'm going to go back and be like, did you do that thing? Yeah, okay, I'll give you the point. So, um, okay. it's still loving that video. <laughs> if you still want to do it, that's fine. If, hey, if you guys want to do it, that's fine. I want you guys to have fun with nutrition. But yeah, I'll look through it here 
and see if I can find it. I think okay. it's through um, Ted Ed. No, not that one. The other one. It's it's like what does nutrition means to me as a student, and you, it's like Paw Town or Paw Tune or something. Oh, yeah, because I stayed up to like uh, night trying to figure it out, and then my computer crashed on me twice, and I was freaking out. And I woke yeah, up. Yeah, that that particular assignment. Um, I I woke up this morning, and then my PowerPoint's still not working. So I like did three attempts trying to make a video. And, it's that one, I think. Yeah, it's that one. I mean, we did it, and like when you get to the TED Ed like site, you can like see that you've done it. But I was wondering how that would be like linked to Canvas for right. the group. So what I do that too. Yeah. See, what I do on this one is that I download it. So when I go to manage my lessons, you I just have to put your name. Actually, what's on right. Canvas? Exactly. Um, that's the big see how thing I can for see that one. Student work. And then I can download all of these students. Like I download them in a CBS file and then I go in and I upload them into Canvas. Okay, because so, it doesn't tell us it's completed or not, even though we completed it. So that's why I think. Yeah, I think don't was... worry about it. I mean, if you did it and you can go back into TED-Ed and you can see it, you did it. So I think that that's probably the biggest thing. But, um, yeah, so see, this is not an assignment that's not for you guys. So I will, I will um, allow you guys if you want to do it. That's perfectly fine. But so like here is where it's supposed to show you all of the stuff that I really have assigned. So I want to make sure that these are the things. So see, it is showing here. And so yeah. that's what, I don't want that to show there. So I will fix that part. But I think it's just the way that I brought in some of the other stuff that it's um, showing like that. But you should be able to see most anything that's due um, on your to-do list at your homepage or right there where the syllabus is. So like usually when you go to the homepage. Ooh, what happened there? I know some, I know this is like a, I know some, uh, instructors have like an assignment tab so then it's easy we just click to assignments and we kind of know what to yeah um, so the problem is that sometimes I have to do a page and not an assignment so that doesn't oh. really work but, um, but the to-do list right here should tell you the things that you have due or going to the syllabus but I'll try to make it more clear that I, I hear you and I, I don't I'm not trying to be difficult um, on, on that. I want you guys to know what's due and what's not. So let me try to work on the layout a little bit more to see if I can make it a little bit more user friendly. And again, some of those other things are popping up um, that shouldn't be. So For lecture one assignment, so that also wasn't supposed to be, um, we also wasn't supposed to do that, the video of what nutrition means to me as a student? Well, I kind of wanted you guys to do that, but you don't have to, no. It's, okay. Okay. I did them both, but I just was com I was confused on which ones were supposed to do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I did them both too. Okay. Well, if you did them, great. If you didn't do them, I don't want you to stress out about having to do them. Like that. That's the bigger picture of it all. Um, and then I'll try to do a better job of when I bring it in, looking at it. What I can do is see what I'm going fast. Um, is I can look at the student view. Like what I try to do is go into the student view and try to look and see what you guys see as a student rather than what I see. Um, and so I must have somehow missed that when I went to the modules and, and couldn't really see that it wasn't showing for you guys. But my idea is that you guys click here and then you look at the module and then you figure out the stuff that's due. And so when you look here, you know that MindTap may not be communicating directly with Canvas, but that you have MindTap stuff due. Everything inside of MindTap will always be due at the same time that your exam is due. So when you have an exam due right here on August 30th, you have MindTap assignments that are due too. So that's kind of the part that I want everybody to, I want to try to be clear on because I don't think that um, Canvas is able to see the dates of the MindTap assignments. And that same thing happens with my other publisher too. Um, okay, so I think <laughs> it's 1042. Um, do you have more questions? Any more questions? 
Okay, so here's what I want to do real fast is that uh, the good news is, is that I don't, um, a lot of what can be what's here, I can also try to record another extra Zoom, I mean, another extra video. Um, but I did want to, one other thing real fast. When you look at this one, one of the things that I posted, uh, this right here I posted yesterday. So some of you may or may not have seen that one. That one is another little video that I put together that I want you guys to watch, okay? So here's the video. Inside of this video is going to have, in the mid part of it, it will have a quiz. And it's one question, and it's not worth any points this time. But moving forward, there's going to be videos that I'm going to put together that I want you to watch that will have a quiz that is going to be part of your quiz grade when you look at your syllabus. They're very low stakes, they're very easy questions, so it's a great way for students, if they're following along and paying attention, to earn bonus points. So I wanted you guys to do this so that you see how it works. I wanted to practice one. So if you haven't went through this one yet, I strongly encourage you to do that, A, because this information is gonna be on your quiz, and two, because inside of this is just a low stakes fake quiz that you can, that I will, like, will be either be happening inside of these lectures. So that's another way for me to make sure that you're doing the work um, by reading the book and that you're understanding what's in the book by me doing these mini lecturettes. Does that make sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Okay, so then what I'm talking about now is, oops, I want to look a little bit about what was in chapter one. And I've said this a couple different times. This is all review. This is nothing new really that you probably haven't seen with the exception of the fact that this textbook author likes to put them in principles. I, you don't have to memorize the principles. I don't want you to just focus on, oh my God, I gotta memorize principles. That's not, the, I want you to understand the principle and why she's saying that that's the first principle. Okay, but you are not going to have to know what that principle is and memorize that for um, the actual quiz that you take inside of Canvas. Okay, um, so, but I want to direct your attention to this. When you see this, what is this? Have you ever seen this before? Some of you, if you maybe had a psychology class before, maybe you have, um, and this uh, is Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So let me just... Five minutes. Mm, long screen, hang on. Okay, so this is Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And what this is saying is that what I want you to be able to do is that when you look at this chapter, hopefully I want you to start asking yourself, can I explain these things to people? Now, do you actually have to? No, but this is how you can test yourself on if you're ready to take the exam. What does this say? Ask yourself, what does that say? And if you don't understand what it is that it's saying, then you should probably go back and read that part in the chapter because it means you're not probably ready for the exam. So what this is saying is obviously it's a triangle. And so we're saying that we're trying to get to the top of the triangle. But at the bottom of the triangle here, these are the things that are most essential for the base. And that you can't, if you don't have these, the odds of you getting to here are a lot less likely, right? It's like trying to get to the top of a pyramid without being physically fit. Would you agree? Would you start dying by the time you ran the stairs, right? So here's what it's saying. It's saying that people need, in Maslow's hierarchy of needs, that people have to have access to air, water, food, shelter, and possibly reproduction to survive. That's, that's science, right? I mean, that's, that's what we know. And then after they have to, can, can procure these things, then you can have this. And I think that this is very interesting when we start to even look at COVID. Think about when COVID hit and how fast it hit and how people were trying to secure all of these things first for their families because we were gonna shelter in place right? And we didn't know, I, I don't know about you, but I had never been through a shelter in place, so I didn't know what that meant. And so I went out thinking, oh my God, I got to have food for two weeks because I'm not going to be able to leave my house. So what I'm saying is that all these things, I can't get to my self-actualization if I can't have that. So here's my example that I want you to think about. If you have diabetes or you have a patient that has diabetes, but you have a patient, like I had many patients when I worked at the clinic 
that were homeless. And so I had a type, type uh, a diabetic, she was actually type two, but she was on insulin. And so she had insulin needs all of the time, but she was homeless. So how do you have an, a patient that has to need access to insulin, but doesn't have access to a refrigerator all of the time to keep her insulin for very long periods of time? What does she do? So how do I get her to take care of her diabetes if she can't procure these things down here? And so that's why this is important when we start to look at how are we going to help people? And in my opinion, why this is one of the most important things for people to understand is that there's no way that I can ask my patient to make sure that she's taking her insulin if she doesn't have food, shelter, and water. And so that's how our body also needs to in order to, do, to even digest, right, food. So that's what those principles are kind of breaking down for you in the textbook. Okay. Now, I want you to look at this and be like, can you explain this? What is this saying? So if you can't explain this, go back to the textbook. If you can't act like you're an instructor like me and try to say these things out loud, then you're probably not getting it. But what this is talking about right here is when you look at this graph, what is this graph saying? This graph is saying it's a bell curve, right? And what do we know about the bell curves? We know that when you're at the top of the bell curve, that's where we're serving the most people. And what this is saying is when we look at our health, this is probably where we have most optimal health. And you can have people that are under health or you can have people that are over health. And either way, death is looming if you have too many outliers on the outside. That's pretty much what this is saying. So here's deficiency and here's toxicity. So those are something as a dietitian and a nutrition professional that I'm always worried about. I'm, not, I'm always worried about deficiency and I'm always worried about toxicity. And I'm trying to get people into that bell curve area where they have optimal health, right? Okay, now in your undergrad, we spent time, or at least in my course, we spent a lot of time in chapter two learning about these different acronyms and what they mean. So you need to make sure that you know what they are. Can you explain them to a consumer? So if you can't explain them to a consumer, then that's where we have problems because you're going to want to be able to explain to them what an upper tolerable intake limit is. What that means is herbs, herbal supplements, they're not regulated by the FDA. Can someone OD and take too much? Absolutely. Are we in a society where people say, oh, it says to take one, so I'll take three because three is better than one, right? So this is where I have to know what the upper limit of toxicity is on all my vitamins and all my nutrients. So that's why they need to understand that. And then they need to know uh, what's the difference between the RDA and the AI. So I see that it's 1049. So if some of you have to peel off because you have another commitment, that is completely fine. I'm going to keep lecturing for just a few more minutes uh, for those that want to stay on. But again, if you have to leave, no problem. Okay, so looking at this stuff, um, and what we're saying here is that when we looked at the EAR, the EAR only helps 50% of the folks, okay? So if we have a society of people, only half of them, if we set the limit at this limit, it's going to help half of them. Well, that's not what we want as a society, right? We want to get close to 100%. So how do we get close to 100%? Well, that's where you have the RDA and you have the adequate intake because on that one, we're at 98%, okay? So the risk of dietary deficiency to 98% of my population, if they can meet the RDA or the AI, are going to be having optimal nutrition intake. That is what this slide is talking about. So go back to your textbook and reread some of these things if this isn't the information that you pulled out of it. Um, I do want you to know for the exam that when we look at this, we're starting to look at nutrition labels, and I need you to know the macronutrients. So in your elementary nutrition course, you should have learned that fat has how many calories per gram, right? So hopefully when I'm asking that question right now, you're saying nine. Okay, if you knew that there were um, nine kcals for every gram, then you could figure out looking at this, if you knew that there were 65 grams, you could take 65 and you could times it by nine, and that would tell you how many calories in this particular product was coming from that. This is important for you to be able to do when you work with consumers. And when we go through each phase of this life cycle, these things that you, that you learned in your undergrad are gonna come back up, and this chapter is all about reviewing that for you. Um, it spent a lot of time in the chapter looking at carbohydrates, okay? So make sure that you know the difference between a simple carbohydrate and a complex carbohydrate. Could you explain that to someone? Can you explain that to your mom or dad that says, what are you getting out of your education? 
be able to explain those to them. If you can act like that and you can do those, then you're ready and set for this particular course. If that's something that you're still struggling with, this is the chapter where you need to go back and reread all of these things and bring it back up to the surface for you. And if any of this stuff is not making sense, then that's when I want you to come to my office hours so that we can talk about it and we can do a little bit more education. Um, on that. So I've even put some notes on here. Can you describe what the glycemic index is to a consumer? Consumers hear about the glycemic index and they hear about simple carbs and they hear about um, complex carbs, but they don't really know what that is. Even when I ask a diabetic who's been diabetic for years, what foods affect your blood sugars? They know carbs, but then I'll say, what foods? Like, tell me, what is a carbohydrate? I'll say, is a hot dog a carbohydrate? They're like, I don't know. Okay, that's what I then have to be able to teach them. Okay, if it comes from a plant, it's a carbohydrate. If it comes from an animal, it doesn't have any carbohydrate. You could eat as many hot dogs as you want and it's never gonna raise your blood sugar. They're like, what? I'm like, yeah, we'll give you a heart attack, but it's not gonna raise your blood sugar. You have to, they have to learn about some of these things. So they have to learn when we look at glycemic index, what is going to change their blood sugar. And when we look at the glycemic index, a glucose load of just straight glucose is at 100 on the glycemic index. That's going to shoot your blood sugars way up, which is good if they're having a low blood sugar, right? But then I don't want them to think when they're having a low blood sugar, if they don't have glucose, that if they have something that's down here that's on the lower end, that's only 42, like an orange, how fast is that going to raise their blood sugar? about half, okay? So that's the part that they need to understand. They need to understand this glycemic index a little bit more. So make sure that you understand it so that you can explain that. For the purposes of the exam, I really need you to understand what the acceptable macronutrient distribution is. What is that? What does the acronym AMDR stand for? Acceptable macronutrient distribution range. And what is it? So what is it for each one? You will need to know moving forward that carbohydrates is 45 to 65% of your calories. We're gonna work on those calculations as we get a little bit further, so don't freak out if you don't know those calculations, but we're going to be working on them. Um, the next one is protein. What is the acceptable macronutrient distribution range for protein? 10 to 35%. You just need to know that, okay? Oops, and then fat. That's my next one, 20 to 35% on this one. So make sure that you know these. Make sure that you know what the different types, what's the difference between a triglyceride and a lipid, if someone asks you. I did my labs and I have triglycerides. What is that, how is that related to fat? Like you wanna be able to know those things and those are things that we covered in your under, uh, in your elementary nutrition course and that's being recovered again in the book. Um, Based on solubility, which one of these am I more worried about from toxicity? When I start to look at this, there's fat-soluble vitamins and there's water-soluble vitamins. Which ones are going to be better for me? Well, the fat-soluble, because they stay in your fat cells, if we had too much of them, they're the ones that can become toxic. So I worry more about these. These you pee out, right? That's what you need to be able to make sure that you've got from your elementary nutrition course. Okay, um, also go and look at your recommended intakes that are in these tables because these will help you study. So these things right here, this is a great review for you. So please make sure that you go in and remember and bring these things back to the surface that you were learning like, oh wow, remember niacin? When we talked about niacin, it's a B vitamin, so it's water soluble, I pee it out. But are there consequences if I have a deficiency in it? And is there something that um, could happen if I OD on it? Flushing, what does that mean? That means my face turns red and I get really bright and I could have headaches. So these are things that we need to know about if someone's taking niacin. Why would someone take niacin? Niacin is usually taken because why? it could be possibly helping some of the synthesis of body fat. So doctors might be prescribing niacin because they have high cholesterol and they're trying to get their cholesterol down and they're worried about having a heart attack. But if they're, if they're prescribing it at a high upper tolerable intake amount, which is be above 35 milligrams, then they might be experiencing some of these things here. And this is what we need to know. Or if they know that they went ahead because you can buy niacin at the grocery store, but they went ahead and bought it at the grocery store, but they have a friend that does it and gets it from their doctor and now they take it and they are having problems okay these are all things that we want to know okay almost done so here's vitamins again these are some of the ones now that once you know what the limits are now is the fun part this is the part where you want to be able to say now if you know that someone needs more vitamin a in their diet what foods have vitamin a 
Okay. What is it? What can I tell them to eat right now that they need that's going to have that's going to help them with vitamin A? So I can look at this and be like, okay, liver is definitely a great source of vitamin A. How many people eat liver? And actually, it's a little bit high. It actually gives you too much. But, but here's the point. What are the other things that are going to give me vitamin A? So sweet potatoes can give me vitamin A. And so can carrots. But what if someone tells me I don't like carrots? Then I'm going to say, oh, do you like sweet potatoes? Oh, yeah, I love sweet potatoes. But I don't like carrots, right? Or what if I have someone who's elderly and has dentures? Can they eat raw carrots? No, but they can probably have sweet potato, right? Because it's soft and moist. So these are things where I'm going to pull out the knowledge that I have and start utilizing it to counsel patients with. And that's the purpose of this course is to start really applying the things that you're learning. So we have to go back to that level. The other thing that we're really going to hopefully talk a little bit more about is nutrition genomics, because it is the field area of where things are going with nutrition and it's moving so much faster. And so what is nutrition genomics? So make sure that you've looked at nutrition genomics, you're familiar with the term. What does it mean? It means very interesting things. It means you might know someone who has um, a very sensitive tolerance to caffeine. Maybe you're the one that's, you know, you have caffeine and then you're like, ah, I like that. And then you know someone who has caffeine and can have it right before bed and fall right asleep. Why is that? That's nutrition genomics. There's a gene that tells me if I'm going to be sensitive to caffeine or not. And now we can actually find it, screen for it, and find out if someone has that. That is amazing. We're going to be able to start doing that with a lot of different other things. And so the world of nutrition genomics is opening up for the dietetics world. And if we don't understand it, we're going to be behind as dietitians. Okay, so here's just some different ones um, as far as some gene nutrient interactions. I'm gonna skip that. Um, make sure that you know what's changing on the labels, okay? Make sure you know how to read the labels so that you can feel comfortable if you had to teach someone to read the label, what is it that they need to learn from the label? So that, that this part of the chapter talked a little bit about making sure to do that. Um, and then the other part, which is very important, which this is the one that I put the slides, the lecturette together for you yesterday that I posted. So I'm not gonna spend any time on this, but make sure that you go back and review that before the exam. Because this is gonna come up time and time again. Okay, Whew. I got one minute until my office hours. So thank you guys for hanging in there. I hope that this was helpful for you. I am going to uh, stop the recording and I will upload this recording to the website if you want to go back and review any of this stuff. So it'll be up on our website or if you know someone who wasn't able to. So again, thank you for staying in um, and staying on the, the call as, through the extra 10 minutes. I appreciate that. That's dedication. And I will see you next week and hopefully we won't have as much questions and we'll have more fun um, with our lectures. Okay. So we'll see everybody next week. Thank you, Professor. Have a great day. Uh -huh, you too. Bye, thank bye. you. Happy birthday. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Happy birthday. Thank you.